Hi Taurus, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is the reading for May 1st to the 7th for Taurus females. I had to separate it because the men were taking over. So this is for Taurus females. <clears throat> I have a Taurus men reading already. Let me fix this. It's crooked. All right. Spirit guides, can we please get a reading for the Taurus females? For Love and Romance for May 1st to the 7th. Thank you so much. This is for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for May 1st to the 7th. Let's see if it's, ooh, Tower. May 1st to the 7th in Love and Romance for our Taurus females. What do we need to know? What does Taurus females, what do the Taurus females need to know? This is for the Taurus woman. For the Taurus woman. For May 1st to the 7th. For May 1st to the 7th for the Taurus woman. In Love and Romance, Spirit Guides, can we please get a reading? Ooh, Magician. Queen of Swords, even under that Six of Wands. I told you, Taurus, you guys are magnetic. May is going to be good. May is going to be, you're going to take care of yourself. You're going to look better, feel better. And there's going to be this whole vibe around you that people are attracted to more than usual. You got the Magician and you got the Queen of Swords and you have the Six of Wands underneath that. This kind of being well-received energy here, popularity with the Six of Wands, the Magician, and the Queen of Swords. That is like two swords energy because the Magician has every single tool, the cup, the wand, the um, sword, the pentacle, they have it all. So they can manifest anything in love and romance, meaning they look good, they talk a good game, they dress nice, they have culture, they're interesting, they're charming, like all of that. They can be a coldness to the Magician, that is a little bit more like cerebral, you know, like like a little like scientisty kind of in the way that they can manifest. And then you got the air sign energy of Queen of Swords. Now this might be somebody who is single, um, somebody who is work who works in communications, works with like public speaking, speech, IT, something like that, or somebody who's like a single parent or a divorcee the queen of swords is somebody who's good with speech right and depending on the cards surrounding the queen of swords it shows what kind of energy she's in what aspect of that swords energy is she is she reflecting that's the magician so this is her using her mind and her speech and her strength and her no bullshit type of attitude with the tools of the magician to manifest in love and romance Okay, can we tell us more? Can you tell us more about the Taurus woman in on May 1st to the 7th? What does Taurus need to know? And you see, she has her hand out like she's open. You know, she, even with the mid, she knows she has everything. She's got her hand out going, I'll listen. You know, whoever wants to step up, it's, I, I'm not an asshole. I'll listen. I'm not, I'm not a monster, right? Just come correct. If I sense any kind of BS, right, then you're going to get played. The magician can be a player, right? But if you come, you know, let's say with flowers or with love or with sincerity, authenticity, she will just melt. And then you'll see the best of the Queen of Swords. All right, so let's see what else do we have here for Taurus or the Taurus woman for May 1st to the 7th. What do we have for Taurus? For the Taurus woman for May 1st to the 7th. What does the Taurus woman need to know in love and romance? Please, Spirit Guides, for May 1st to the 7th. What else is... Okay, we got this. Knight of Wands coming in hot. The, the Tower. This could. This is speed and out of nowhere. And then we got the King of Wands. And we've got a King of Pentacles. Holy shit. What did I tell you? And the Three of Cups. And the High Priestess. Okay, so the Knight of Wands, the King of Wands, and the King of Pentacles. When I tell you she's using her speech and her mind and all the other tools that she's got in her toolbox to manifest, if you don't come correctly, you will get played. That's the magician, right? Because she's honorable. But once there's game playing or fuckery, she will let you have that sword and cut you off. And have no second thoughts. But if you, like I said, if you come correctly, now there's a lot of passion and commitment. You either have three people 
or two. Knight of Wands can be somebody younger, but we see that there's a Knight of Wands who has a tower moment and turns into King of Wands. So somebody who might have originally seen you as something that is, you know, more with lustful intent, someone who thought you were hot, let's say, it's not that deep, right? Who are passionate about you, excited about you, found you, you know, exciting to be around, wanted to get with you. It's like they realized something with a tower moment. I don't know what happened. Maybe we're clarifying this. We've got the three of cups. It could be after a date, after a reunion, after, you know, some kind of friends, social party gathering that you meet them at where they see you something, right? Or they see you out and about somewhere, dancing, drinking, whatever. It's like they had this realization and then they're coming with a more mature attitude with the king of wands. So something has happened that has made them have a shocking realization and breaking down whatever they thought was the case, but wasn't the case with you. Then you have a king of pentacles. You see, they're both looking in different directions. It's not the same person. So at least, at the very least, there's two kings. Now, the king of wands can be a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sag, or somebody who is more passionate, salt of the earth, likes to look good, likes to take care of themselves, proud, magnetic, uh, sexy type of energy. And then you've got the king of pentacles, who is established, secure, lone wolf, wise, benevolent, more Venus energy, kind, loving, generous, wants to see everybody else do well. This is like the father-husband figure. Husband material, basically, right? And then they're somebody who's all about their kingdom, their 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 family, making sure everybody's taken care of and 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 protected. Very earth energy. So that's Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and then you've got the Three of Cups, clarifying all this, which is speaking to dating, texts, messages, gatherings, going out, reunions, even reconciliations. So you got the High Priestess is showing that some secret is going to be revealed. This is also about using your intuition. Maybe it's the secret that's revealed, something that perhaps you were keeping hidden, right? Because that ties into that player energy, right? That shocked somebody into leveling up, right? And there's, look, th yeah, because somebody offered love and commitment and is in love, wants to get married, wants the full, somebody who walked away. This is, this is crazy. All right. All that's under there. So let's just pull some love cards to see what messages come out the strongest for you, Taurus. And notice your first card out is the magician. Able to manifest anything. Like on a lower polarity, if she's pissed off, the queen of swords is like shooting fish in a barrel. You know, in terms of manifesting and love and romance. All right, so spirit guides. What messages do we have for the Taurus woman? For May 1st to the 7th in love and romance. What messages are there for the Taurus woman for May 1st to the 7th? All right, we got honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together and trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. So we've got this pull. And on the bottom, we've got heart to heart conversations. Honestly, discuss your feelings with each other. I'm going to read you honeymoon because I think it's speaking to something like if you just got married, you're going on your honeymoon. If you um, are not married or you're single, it's saying taking a trip somewhere, you'll meet somebody special, maybe long distance. But I'll read that. Trust is just saying that there are trust issues here. There's trust issues. There is also heart to heart. Con it can be overcome. The trust issues is basically saying that it, there's, there's no deal breaker here. These two tie in perfectly. There has to be heart to heart conversations and with faith and these conversations, right, that the trust issues will be overcome. So let me read Honeymoon. Just because they have like different aspects of this in meaning. This card indicates a need for a getaway to nurture romantic love. The specific application of this message depends upon the person who is inquiring. For some, this card is a literal meaning. You're going away with your new spouse following your wedding. For those already in a long-time partnership, this card speaks to reigniting the spark by taking a romantic holiday. It can also relate to a honeymoon period of a new relationship. 
And for still others, this card indicates that you will meet someone special while on vacation. I'll read you trust too, just because I think you'd want to know. So trust, in response to your question, the romance angels ask you to trust that everything is exactly as it needs to be. Do not add fear to the situation, which will only create drama and negativity. Instead, the angels ask you to release your worries to them. Your present situation is here to bring you blessings and personal growth, leading to the beautiful romantic love you so deeply desire and deserve. As you follow the pathway you're currently on, trust that it's leading you in the right direction. Your faith uplifts your energy, which in turn attracts positive experiences and people, including your romantic partner. This is truly a situation where with faith, all things are possible. So with faith, right? Heart to heart conversations. I'll read that too. It says, your love life needs a healthy infusion of honest communication according to the romance angels. You have been harboring emotions that are masking your feelings of love. There's still time to heal the situation. However, it will require effort on your part. You may need to initiate an uncomfortable discussion and risk upsetting your partner. In the end, though, this is a necessary move to ensure the health of your relationship. It is, if necessary, schedule, ugh, schedule an appointment with a counselor. This professional can steer the conversation away from blame toward resolution you can also gain from free groups, such as, and there's all these like different groups that you can join. Whether you communicate with your partner alone or with a neutral third party, your heart-to-heart -heart discussions will result in personal growth. Remember that you can't control another's reactions. You can only be honest about how you feel and know what you will and won't accept in a relationship. By sharing your feelings, you stand a much better chance of teaching your partner about your needs instead of suffering silently. So it literally looks like there is two people at the very least that you're dealing with and there's some secret that comes out it might bring trust issues up you know it, they might have been slacking because you got queen of swords and there's that cutting energy to queen of swords like a divorcee or something so if you're separated or you just broke up with someone or something like that and you're in this kind of i, I have everything i need to manifest it's, like, it's not an overly emotional energy the magician and the queen of swords barely like you got one cup with the magician like you're capable if you get past the queen of swords um you know bullshit meter then she's capable of loving with a full cup but she's not there yet so why is that because there's this kind of you know fast lusty youthful you know in and out kind of energy with the knight of wands and there's something that happens with tower moment that's speaking to they level up from knight to king so something woke them up all right, so let me pull A Journey of Love by Alana Fairchild. Take these away. Spirit guides, can we please get a love message for Taurus, for the Taurus woman, for May 1st to May 7th? What does Taurus need to know for May 1st to May 7th? What does Taurus need to know for May 1st to May 7th, please? The Christ Flame. 31. The Christ flame on the bottom is ethereal touch 27. Let me read that. 31. All right, so it says within you burns the flame of Christ of the Christ. Beyond religion, this flame belongs to all hearts willing to receive the divine, opening to it as a lover would open the heart to receive the beloved though the awakening of the christ begin within sorry brings greater closeness to the divine and therefore greater love and depth of compassion it too can bring sadness righteous anger and a passionate need to contribute positive healing action and change in the world you may be an introspective soul who does this through mastering their inner world with meditation and yoga raising your own vibration with absolute intent that this bring healing to the world around you you may be an extroverted soul that thrives in sharing messages and living a life of dynamic action in support of the causes that are worthy and moving to your brave heart, capable of feeling divine outrage and responding with inspired action. You may be a combination of these soul types and choosing wisely what you consume, which companies you support, what television you do or do not watch, and what you read. Voting for the life you want to have around you in the world through your actions, internal and external. This is the Christ flame igniting within you, setting the world aflame with the fire of divine love. This oracle brings guidance that 
You are connecting with the universal Christ consciousness, and your heart is meant to awaken as a sacred heart bearing the Christ flame of divine love this lifetime. You are part of the wave of awakening happening on the earth now. You are exactly where you are meant to be and doing exactly what you are meant to be doing. Keep going. And then the poem says, Love is more than words can define. It is a feeling which wells up inside and longs for release. It is a smile which starts in my heart and spreads across my face like a silly grin. It is a knowing so deep in my being that every cell speaks in a language only lovers know. And most of all, it is the beginning, the birth, the possibility, the promise of a tomorrow, the hope that grows into something we can only imagine when hearts combine and love becomes more. Beautiful. All right, and then we have Ethereal Touch 27. I like to put my uh, divine beings on a little altar. So let's put the Christ flame on a little altar. I do that for my goddesses too. Let's see if you can see over like this. Okay, so we'll read 27 and 27 Ethereal Touch. Spirit is present in your very touch at this time, and you are having an impact on the world around you, particularly your close relationships, in ways that are far more profound than may be immediately obvious. The touch of your soul is ethereal, spiritual, of light and sound. It moves the heart and opens pathways of possibility through love, faith, and trust that would otherwise be impossible to access. Trust in the presence of the divine in your touch, physical and spiritual. Your healing presence is making waves of love rise and stir in this world, and the divine lives and breathes through you, beloved. Remember that though the sacred temple of your body gifts you with hands through which to hold and give, it is the soul within the flesh that renders touch a sacred healing. This oracle guides you to accept and embrace your healing abilities and to trust that you can feel your way through life by opening your hands to receive and taking hold of the opportunities that are presented to you. You are meant to touch the world with your spirit. And the poem says, In a world of no coincidences and no mistakes, you were heaven sent. I thank God for the opportunity to know you, to experience your kindness, your generosity, and most of all, our love. How long I have waited to open my heart, to bear my soul, to let my power comfort and my arms hold, to let my wisdom counsel and my love awaken. While this is only the beginning, when I look in your eyes, I know. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're going to end the reading with a Kitsune Oracle card by Lucy Cavendish. Final card, Spirit Guides, can we get a final card? Thank you so much. What a beautiful reading. Spirit Guides, can we get a reading for the Taurus Woman for May 1st the 7th? See, I was just looking at the Magician and the Christ Conscious, the, the Christ Flame card. This is somebody who's super spiritual, super... Well, her cup is full. Let's put it that way. Like she, she can manifest. All right, final card. Spirit guides, can we get a card for the Taurus woman for me? First to the seventh in love and romance or whatever you think they need to know. For Taurus, the Taurus woman, please. For May 1st to May 7th. What does Taurus, what does Taurus woman need to know? For May 1st to the 7th. What does a Taurus woman need to know? For May 1st to the 7th, please. Thank you so much. Final card for Taurus. Final card for Taurus. There we go. Past lives. And on the bottom, beauty of age. I like to read the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's see. This is the deck. Seven past lives. You long some days for gentility, propriety, older times when distance and conventions governed behavior. Within those laws and boundaries, you found freedom and expression, even while there was restriction and oppression. There is a sense of how things once were, nostalgia, and yearning for times long past when this card comes to visit you. This Victorian Kitsune is here to remind you of your own past lives, for she journeys through the realms of the human ones, finding the people who have forgotten their wisdom, and she reminds them of who they once were so they can remember and bring to this life the wisdom of who they once were. 
She will make sense of the manners and the preferences you have, the desire for manners that were more genteel and refined, for roles that were more certain and sure, and for codes that, although restrictive and binding, gave us surety and a sense of place. The past is not the present, and you're not being reminded of your past in order to negate or escape where you are in this time, in this lifetime. But who we are is all we have been, and in memory there lies many a mystery which can enrich our lives. So know now that your fascination with aspects of the past have meaning, and that you are being visited by the Victorian fox to remember a little more of who you once were in order to become more surely who you are destined to be. This would be a wonderful time to incorporate a little old world world magic into your life. Take a step back, slow down, and revisit savoring every moment. Beautiful. All right, and then let's read Beauty of Age 34. In many cultures, youth is worshipped and aged ones are hidden, considered to be no longer worthy of respect or valuable. Yet, in other cultures, the older a person becomes, the greater not only their wisdom, but their beauty. For Kitsune, the passing of years becomes the gateway to deeper and stronger energies and powers. Like this ancient wisteria vine, its adventures recorded in its woody sinews, twining and curling about, playful and engaging, strong and deeply rooted, and flowering as it grows older, so you now, friend, shall vow to do yourself. For as you grow older, seeker, you will continue to flower. You will further develop. You will thrive and explore, adventure and inspire, and this fairy comes to you to ask you to become older in beautiful ways, to know that your aging is beautiful and that spirits all about you respect and honor you, for with every year you have lived, you have grown and you will continue to grow. Many people as they grow older begin to feel that they must wither, but others dance into their elder years, finding partnerships and becoming beginning new projects, allowing their true selves and eccentricities to become more and more clear until we are buoyed up by their active, daring lives. You too will thrive, grow older, and dance. You too can become more beautiful as you age and defy the stereotypes that would have us wither and decline and become invisible to the world. Speak to people, venture out, rebel against those who urge you to behave in ways that are not true to yourself. Make your life a divine shower of sparkling inspiration wherever you go, for as long as you are blessed to live. No, not this fate for you, beautiful one. Grow old and stay fully alive until the very last breath you take this time around on this planet. Beautiful. That's that's so beautiful. This is that magician energy. Even the Foxfire Oracle is giving that magician energy, is saying, you might be somebody older. Your purpose is so much greater. You're so magnetic you're attracting numerous suitors and there's one in particular it shows that there is like a honeymoon phase of this relationship and also trust issues and needing to have heart to heart conversations maybe you intimidate them maybe they don't let their guard down maybe you don't let your guard down whatever it is you are someone who is extremely spiritual and capable of manifesting in love and you're very um dignified, old school, and traditional and respectful with the way you conduct yourself and your abilities with a magician. Because an asshole can use that magician energy to use people, abuse people, take advantage. But a spiritual person knows that with great strength, you have to be kind. And so the magician and the queen of swords shows the ability to manifest easily in love and romance and having all the tools, but there's an integrity with the Queen of Swords. Um, that's your reading, Taurus. I'll be back with your next week's readings. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye for now.